Hello. <laughs> Two years ago, I stood on a stage much like this one, and I talked about sex robots. I talked about the long history of sex toys and sex dolls, and about the fears that people have about artificial lovers. And I talked about the possibility of a future where we have sex technology that is abstracted, ambiguous, that brings us new forms of pleasure and connects us to each other. I spent the following year writing a book about this. And all the while, the race to build the world's first commercially available sex robot was going on. As I wrote, I kept seeing stories in the media. And they made it sound as if these sex robots were inevitable, that there was some kind of invasion planned, that we couldn't escape from them. And I knew from my research that wasn't really true. So I'm going to have a look today at what the truth really is behind these headlines, what's actually going on. There's this fear, this worry, that perhaps people, and by people, they mean men, because sex robots are overwhelmingly aimed at heterosexual men, that people might replace their partners with a robot. And in fact, this newspaper went as far as to say that this could be the end of sex, that people would replace their partners and they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a robot and a woman. And I think that's very unfair to the men. <laughs> and this is why. Let me show you what sex robots are like today, because they don't really exist. There's just a couple of prototypes out there in the world, and that's it. So here they are. So these are the two most advanced examples. Really, this is all that's there. Um, the one on the left, that's Samantha or that's Samantha's head. But Samantha also has a body. <laughs> Samantha is a sex doll, and she has some sensors in her body and some vibrating motors. And she has an artificially intelligent personality. She can react to you. There have been about 25 versions of Samantha made, um, but she's no longer in production. The one on the right is Harmony. Harmony is created by an American company called Abyss Creations. Harmony is a sex doll from the neck down. She doesn't move. She can't stand up on her own. But she has an animatronic head. Her head can move. She can smile, blink, move her mouth. And she also has artificial intelligence. She can chat to you like a chatbot. Here she is. How are you today? Very well. I can't wait until we're alone. I've got a special surprise for you. Oh, yeah? I will not tell you yet. I will wait for the right moment. So when we hear that sex robots are going to replace everyone, this is really what we have. It's a handful of workshops that are making sex dolls with some limited interactivity. Now, some of them, like Harmony, are really beautifully crafted. They're very skillfully made. Some of them have technology that's turning out to be quite good. But it's not in any advanced stage whatsoever. And I don't think it will be. I think it's very niche, and it will stay very niche. So what's the problems? A few years ago, this headline came out and said, you know, sex robots could reveal your deepest perversions to complete strangers. <gasps> it's really worrying. Yeah, that one's true. <laughs> it's true because anything we connect to the internet, from a laptop to a light bulb, has the potential to be hacked. Anytime you go online, you're at risk of your data being stolen or shared. And that could also be true of a sex robot. So yes, it's a bit to panic about, because sexual information is particularly sensitive. Um, I'll leave it up to you if it would embarrass you or not. 
there's a lot of fear around the idea that there could be an increase in real world sexual violence because the idea is that you know, men could abuse the robots and then this would spill over into real life. We've heard this argument many times before about computer video games. It always, you know, that, that thing where, oh yes, if you have a violent video game, what happens? People could be more violent in reality. But there have been thousands of studies on this. There's zero conclusive evidence to say that that is the case. So I think this is an unfounded headline. And um, where it says that there is a, a sex robot with a frigid setting, that was referring to one particular type of sex robot that doesn't even exist. So I don't think that there's any fear that this will happen in real life because the closest parallel we have is the sex doll. And I've talked to people who own sex dolls and by and large, they are incredibly respectful and they cherish the dolls and treat them really well, as if they are in a relationship with them. They don't want to harm them. So I think this is a moral knee-jerk reaction. But if it's a moral knee-jerk reaction, what does this headline mean? Back in 2017, there was a headline that said, a sex robot was molested and destroyed at a trade show. This didn't sound very realistic to me, so I dug in a little deeper. What happened was that Sergi Santos, who makes the Samantha robot that I showed you, he had brought a model to an electronics show, and he put it on display. And he said to the people, all the attendees there, oh, you can touch her. You can, you can poke and feel her. Not sexually, not at all, just because it was curiosity a new type of technology that people had never encountered. So, of course, they wanted to push it and poke it and prod it. And when anyone who's ever been to a museum will know, there's a reason you put delicate objects behind glass. So thousands and thousands of hands touching the sex robot, yes, it was damaged, but it was never sexual, it was never molested. Santos has been very upset about the media coverage because he was actually working on the idea that he could build AI that would lead to a, a reciprocal exchange between a human and a robot. He liked the idea of consent. And this disturbed him so much that he's now stopped production. In 2018, 10 people, eight of them women, were murdered by a man who described himself as an incel. It's short for involuntary celibate. Incels are people who feel they are owed a fundamental right to sex and they aren't getting it. They're very bitter about this and they hate women and they plot and plan vicious attacks on women and sometimes they carry those out. Opinion col columnists, Opinion columnists were very quick to suggest that maybe a sex robot would be a good solution to redistribute sex. But I don't think that's the case. This is not about access to sex. Incels are about hatred towards women, and I don't think we can engineer out misogyny. Also in 2018, there was an academic study about the health implications of sex robots. And it was reported that sex with ro robots may not be healthy. I was particularly skeptical about this headline because it talks about a booming sex robot industry and there's no such thing. It turns out that the academic study behind it actually said there's no evidence to say whether or not sex with a robot is good or bad. And that's something we've been saying in this research community for quite some time. We simply don't know. It's a very new subject, a very new area. Unfortunately, some news agencies were a bit more realistic in their reporting. So this is where we're at. We've had centuries of dreaming about the perfect artificial companion, but we're really only at the start working out whether or not we can make them. 
If it sounds like I'm here to advocate for the sex robots, that's not quite true. I have my concerns as well. But as a scientist, I want to see an evidence-based approach. I don't think we can make moral knee-jerk reactions. The sex robot market is small. In its current form, I don't think it will grow. I think we can do better than that. We're going to have to learn to live in a world that contains robots in many different forms, and we'll have to adapt to that. Bit by bit, robots will come into our lives, and we'll adapt to it. I want you to take away today that our future is human-centric, even if that happens. We are still the people in charge. We've adapted to things over and over again throughout our entire existence. Every time we create technology, we adapt to it. We adapted to writing, to the printing press, to the book and to the newspaper. And we adapted to the sat-nav and the smartphone and the voice assistants in our homes. They were all once really alien to us, and now we just take them for granted. Technology is a fundamental part of our humanity. And I think that the really fun question is, where is it going to take us next? Thank you.